Hi, this is Swati Sila from the softwaretestinghelp.com team and in this segment we're going to talk about integration testing. So integration testing, um, just like with every other topic that we deal with on um, our through our website, we're going to actually you know start with answering the basic questions about this topic. So um, the what, when, who, where and eventually the how. Now what integration testing necessarily is, um, it's just you know a form of putting together all the individual units of code that are already unit tested plus all the other components that actually make up for the entire system. So for example, if there were to be a database component, there were UI forms and there is some sort of programming logic that needs to go, um, it, that needs to all work together harmoniously. Integration testing is all about making that connection happen and see whether it is all um, in accordance with what is the expected behavior of the system, of the system or not. So uh, typically since this involves like you know um, working with the code, see if there is a sort of um, you know uh, some sort of design issue that you've figured out and you know um, some integration between any two components or any two units of code is not happening the way it should, which is basically an integration testing defect. In that case, how would we handle it? Um, we're going to handle it by actually having to manipulate the code. So anytime a code manipulation or looking at the code is important to actually make a decision or validate the software, all those testing types uh, can be grouped as a white box testing technique. However, um, in some cases, uh, integration testing is also called the gray box testing. And let me explain why. Now, uh, let's say there's modules A, B, and C. And uh, yes, A, B, and C um, themselves might be, you know, uh, basic blocks of code that are already integrated. But let's take it, uh, take a look at integration testing from a very high level. Let's say there is some sort of, you know, relationship that has to be established uh, between these three you know interacting modules in order for us to achieve a certain state of the system. Now if this is the case um, it is in a way white box because uh, the integration is not going to happen itself so it's not like you put one next to another and it just you know integrates automatically. That's not how it works. Probably a certain amount of code has to be written in order to make that integration happen so there is definitely um, a reference to the code which makes it a sort of a white box testing technique. But at the end of it when you know the final system is in this form. So when you are integrating these three major components this is pretty much how the application under test or the final software product is going to look like. At this point of time what you're going to do is provide an input and validate the output which is pretty much a black box. Um, but you know as you can see this is neither a, a totally black box testing technique nor is it completely white box. So sometimes it's also called the gray box testing type. Again, um, that sort of categorization um, probably in, at a practical level is not very crucial, uh, but I think it's just to, you know, uh, know it for the sake of, you know, uh, having a complete knowledge on the subject. So um, that's basically what integration testing is. And uh, when is integration testing uh, performed? Typically when the unit testing activity is done. And um, there is no better point of reference for us to establish that um, than the V model actually. So you see, uh, as soon as the coding part is done, the next subsequent step is to unit test a particular um, piece of you know autonomously working code. So that's also performed by the developers. And once all the units of test units of code are tested, and when you're ready to go, uh, that is when integration testing begins. And integration testing is always a validation against the architectural design. So the horizontal references that you're seeing right in the middle of the V module, that's very important uh, to understand. And um, V model that is why uh, becomes a very important you know um, reference model for us to understand because um, it it really clarifies um, what form of testing happens at what stage and you know what is the point of reference that we are drawing and so on and so forth so integration testing is always against the design requirements uh, coming to who uh, as we talked about earlier it is typically done by the developers and uh, where um, 
unit test, uh, integration testing, just like unit testing, also happens in the um, development environment because at that point of time, even though the application might look like the final application under test or the final software product, it is still under the ownership of the development team. Hence, it stays in the development environment while it gets, um, you know, integration tested. So we've seen the uh, V-model as well. We could, um, this is important to understand uh, against what requirements integration testing usually takes place. Now, all that we are left with is answering the question, how, right? So um, how in the sense that it's, uh, you know, a, every kind of testing has, you know, a, a kind of um, a systematic methodology that is to be followed. Uh, but there are few uh, concepts that are very important to understand when it comes to integration testing. Let's say, for example, we have a few components in our application and, um, um, you know, uh, all the software systems are data exchange based, correct? I'm sorry about that. So either the software systems send the data or receive them. So for the sake of simplicity, let's say there are like two modules and um, module one is the sender of the data and module two is the receiver. Now when we are integration testing, we do have a choice on how we try to combine them. So the flow of data is this direction. So if the approach is that you start with, you know, uh, the receiver and then you know, integrate the sender to the receiver. So the direction of the data being the same. So you are starting with the receiver uh, and, you know, um, and then moving on to the sender. This approach of starting, um, you know, uh, from the bottom, you know, where uh, the data comes to eventually and keeping on adding the top layers, this is called the bottom-up approach. So this is just about the order in which individual components are integrated to form the entire system. On the other hand, if you start with the sender and you um, add the receiver functionality to it in a systematic fashion and then keep on building, this becomes your top-down approach. So the top-down or bottom-up approach is only based on the direction of the data flow in the system. So um, again, if you ask me, is it like, you know, really, um, how does it matter which way we integrate it? Um, it's just to understand the flow of data, what we have on hand first. All of these uh, decisions uh, will, you know, all of these uh, considerations will cause a change in the decision of which approach is the better one. Also, there is another concept called stubs and drivers when it comes to the integration testing. Um, stubs and drivers is when you have, uh, again, ideally when you're trying to integration test, you should have everything that you need. But when you don't or when you're trying to, you know, simulate a future behavior of the application, um, there is there comes a concept called stub and driver. Again, I'm going to try to simplify this very much. Say there is a module where you're trying to buy a certain product. So when you're buying a certain product, if this is the key functionality that we're looking at, there is a search page where you could like, you know, um, search, select, view the product. And let's say this page eventually leads you to a buy page where you're going to buy the product. So uh, the search page is the calling page. That means this is the one that invokes a call to the buy page. Um, and this is the called page, correct? Now. Ideally, as I said, you need to have these two on a 100% uh, developed and unit tested first to get to testing. But we don't live in a perfect world. When the calling function is, you know, 100% um, available and the called function is not. So in that case, what the developer could do is they could write a piece of dummy code that simulates or you know um, that it, that has a limited functionality only to see whether buy is getting invoked from search or not so uh, so in the buy functionality for example there might be uh, options to make a payment you know receive a confirmation but all that is not gotten into is the search you know screen uh, directing you to buy the right product that we've chosen something like that so there's a limited amount of functionality that is simulated now this dummy code is generally referred to as a stub. 
So once this tab is developed, uh, since the calling function is anyways available, this integration can be tested. The integration testing of these two modules can, uh, uh, we can make that happen even though by is not 100% correct. So um, this is the concept of a stub. And then moving on to what a driver is. So a driver is, again, it's the reverse in the situation. Let's say this is the search and this is the buy. You have the buy 100% developed. So this is the called operation and this is the calling operation and this is at zero. Nothing is there. So a dummy code, or you know, again, a dummy might be a misnomer, but a code with limited amount of functionality that will, you know, uh, cause the interaction to happen but will not be like you know uh, all will not have all the features that search is supposed to have so in this case this uh, you know piece of code that is created just to make this integration test happen is called a uh, driver but then we have a buy so this buyer uh, the driver code will have the functionality that has the capability to invoke the um, buy or the called module so stops and drivers are created when you have to test an application or you know when you have, when you have to integrate a component that's not completely available or when you have to integrate a component that might be you know futuristic but right now you want to see whether you know this sort of interaction is possible um, when we need to go there so um, that's about it uh, but to see you know to, to give a very you know vague uh, you know high level idea to non testers a very um, high level um, you know example for non-testers on how integration testing might happen is see we have the functionality for user interfaces we have the functionality for databases triggers so on and so forth correct so in putting these two components together in a way that they interact harmoniously is you know uh, also an example of integration testing at a very high level of course the ground rules on how this interaction has to happen what sort of data transfer has to happen in what format, all that again can be found in your uh, V model. So um, a quick recap, integration testing is integrating the individual units of code or components to make sure um, that it is as per the design. It is a white box or a gray box testing technique that is mostly performed by a developer in the development environment. And uh, there are lots of different ways to perform this. Uh, some popular approaches are top down and bottom up. And there's also a concept of stub and driver to make it um, to make integration testing happen in an otherwise imperfect world. Um, well, thank you.